going to show you how to cut dovetails. I've sized my wood, two pieces. I have to lay out for the dovetails. That's the most critical part, getting everything laid out. This is going to have two dovetails in it. I'm going to work in metric. So I'm coming in 10 millimeters from each side. Finding the center and then going five millimeters on either side of that. That will give me three equal sized pins on my piece of wood. I'm going to get the width of the two, the, the uh, adjacent piece of wood onto the end of here. I've already squared the ends of the piece of wood. I'm going to do the same on this one here. So I'm flushing it with my fingertips on one side. And that's just a rough guideline. I'll be squaring that with a knife wall soon. But those two lines represent the thickness of the piece of wood. So I'm going to make the dovetails on this piece and the pins on this piece. So I've set up a sliding bevel to a one in seven pitch. And this is a one in seven pitch. So I've got uh, one inch across, squared this line up and seven inches high. And where this intersects here gives me the pitch that I want, which is a one in seven. Then I set my sliding bevel to this pitch on here. That gives me the exact angle that I want. So I can flip this in both directions to get both sides of the dovetail. I'm going to do the center lines first here. So I'm going on the mark there, across here. I flip over, do the same here. Flip over to here. You can see, I think, these are my tails and these are where the pins will come through. So, uh, this now has to be cut square onto this side. This is how my dovetails look now. So I'm going to cut out this piece, this piece, and this piece. So that's here, here, and here. So I remove those parts. First of all, what I'm going to do is cut down the night these um, angles that I put on here, just visually so that you can see. I'm going to put the lines on your side. Just so you can see where this goes. Can I see this? No, I can't see it. I bring it low in the vise because it reduces the vibration. My finger is on the side, my finger is pulling against the thrust. And this is my thumb guides the saw to the line. Once I've gone in, then I can focus purely on the angle I'm going to cut now. I stop just shy of my line. 
on the top here you can see where my X is I cut on this side of the line on this side on this side and this side and I did the same in here I can still see my line here 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 and here on the piece of wood that I want to keep so I keep those lines all the way through what I'm going to do now is take my square I already squared the end of this as you can see here I already squared the end and because I did this piece of wood is slipped into place here and I slide it up until I can just barely feel the end grain of the duft of the uh, piece then I go right in between the knife cut so this is on the outside pin recess in between the saw curves, so not over the face of the dovetails. This is going to come off, so I'm transferring this line all the way around. This is an internal corner, so I could go all the way across here if I wanted to, but I like to discipline myself not to. This guarantees that these shoulder lines, if this square is square and my wood's parallel, which I work on to get it exact, parallel, square, same thickness and everything, I get this definitive line here. I just deepen the knife wall just to... Uh, give me a recess here. So this actually is going to flick out of the way here. That's giving me a recess, the depth of my knife wall. And my saw goes right up against my finger to guide it first. Once it's in, two or three strokes, I rub the saw and follow the knife wall down to the cut. Just a little bit of there. Nice, clean inside cut. Very crisp, precise, beautiful cut. Now, the same on the opposite one. So a small recess here. You flick it out with your thumb or your finger. See where my thumb goes right up against the plate, steadies the saw, align my eye, and follow the knife wall, and listen to the saw in the cut. So that's that. Right on the very end of this, I'm going to take a three quarter inch chisel and just glide it over the surface fibers just to clean up any fuzzy bits. Really not much with a sharp saw. This next bit here, I have to remove this midsection. So I have my knife wall guiding me, so I'm gonna go with a, a smaller chisel this is a half inch chisel and it fits right in between here. Flip over. Just chisel in towards a knife wall. 
I keep this wider chisel, it's a half inch, and I do, it just fits nicely. Can you see? It fits just about two millimeters under the width of the opening, so it's perfect for what I want to do, because now I want to chop. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explain here. I go right onto that knife wall, then with a chisel hammer, now the important thing is here is not to hit it too hard. So this, that's about as much as I want to hit at this depth because I have no, no real wall of resistance yet. As I go deeper, I'll be able to hit harder, but just to start with, otherwise I can press the end grain fibers and I move that knife wall even a fraction and it will show as a gap when I put my dovetails together. So I've only gone in maybe half a millimeter at the most. So here now, into between the two saw curves. Now I might at some point have to go to a narrow chisel, but right now this will work. Watch now. So ch -ch -d, and then stop, flick. Flip over. And the same on the opposite side, the inside. As soon as I hear that dip sound, I stop. And this is where I can go a little bit harder and a little bit deeper now. So right up against the knife wall here is so important you get this right on that knife wall. Just a tap and listen to the sounds. Because the bevel is only going to go so far before it really hits and wants to move material that you don't want to move, so. And this is where I'm gonna change chisel size because going in at the deeper angle, I need to have more access. So here, I go in here and here. Now see this, I'll show you on the other side. And you'll need to come in a little closer because instead of going square to my material this way, like I did before, I'm following the rake of the dovetail with this 3 8 chisel and I'm working down from each side and that creates a slight bevel on each side of the, the pin area that I'm removing. And that gets me right in the middle where I want to be. So I'm going to go with the narrower chisel again on the chop cut. If you do bruise the edges, sometimes you do when you're chopping, as long as you're not removing material, you can steam that wood back up with a hot iron. Tough bit there. I've left this outside rim on here, you may not realize. I could have just split cut this through here, but when I lay this on the bench, can you imagine when I put the chisel in here to chop, this single-sided bevel wants to press down, so I keep this as a table to stop it from bending in the cut. And that gives me uh, support all the way through until the two cuts from each side meet in the middle. So here, 
right in up to my knife wall, flip over, make sure there's nothing underneath that will cause indents in the wood. Now this is about to break through, but I try to prevent it as long as I can. So here down, I'm going down the inside rake of the dovetail first. Like this, can you see this? I just angle in. Same on this one. Now it's getting a little fractious, that middle bit, because there's really only maybe one sixteenth of wood between the two halves. Can you see I'm quite deep in there? So now we chop here. See, I'm lowering my fingertips. I can't really hold it here. I don't have enough closeness to the work. I want this message that comes from the tool edge. This time, maybe this will cut through. There we go. What I end up inside here is I don't get the end grain inside uh, tearing out like a tooth might from when you're a child. So I don't get that. I'm going with my narrower chisel, the 3 8 chisel, and I'm going in here. My thumb presses on top of the chisel. My right hand's providing the power just to clean up the very inside corners. Now I'm ready to trace around these pieces. A little bit on this inside corner here. Just to trace around these onto this second piece. I usually set this to a plane or some kind of platform. Just takes out the guesswork and holding everything. And now I can rest it steadily here. So I'm looking at the inside corner here, right inside here. Can you, I'm going right here. I'm looking in there. I don't want any light shining through. But I'm also flush on this outside edge. So I'm going to use a pencil, but on some woods you could use a knife. I'm going to use a pencil in here. Careful not to move it. Now, the thing, the important thing is to know that the, the pencil has to be on the outside of those dovetails. So all my cutting is going to be on the inside. So right here, make your marks if you not familiar with this, it will just help you remember which side of the line you have to cut on. This line is going to be parallel to this edge here. Like this. I'm using my finger as a guide. But you may want to use your square as a guide to get you parallel to the outside edges. So go ahead and use a a square, if you're not used to using your finger as a parallel guide, that's the best way to go. So now you've got to remember which side of the line you're going to cut on. I put this low in the vise here because that gives me minimum vibration and it maximizes the, the holding. So my thumb, my body position is important. I place the saw right up against the plate and make a few rubbing cuts very carefully. I want to be very close to my line all the way through because I want it to come, I want this joint to come straight off the saw cut, not have to chisel it after I'm done. So now I'm following the vertical line parallel to the edge. 
stopping just above the line. I'm going to go to the other line, the other <laughs> angle, the same angle. <laughs> different woods will give you different resistance. This is oak, and it does resist quite strongly sometimes. Just above my line, alter my body position, get my eye lined up. If you're going off your cut, go back in the cut like this and just use the side of your saw teeth just to correct any discrepancy. you can see which side of the line I cut on. So I've cut, this is the waste wood, this is coming out. So you can see I've left my lines in on each side. There's my line from my cut here, here, and here. So you can see, and there you can see I've stopped short of the line each time because naturally the wood is going to split down that last little bit. Back to my square. I know the end is square because I checked it when I planed the end. So my piece of wood goes on here. I flush it here with my fingertips. And then I go right in between here with my knife, in between the saw cuffs first. Right on the corner, I make a small nick here just a nick, it's not going across the face, it's just going on the corner. I place my knife inside that nick and slide my square up to it, make another nick on the other side. And this is what guarantees me being dead square from one side to the other on the tail recess. Here, so in between my knife curves again, here and here. Light with the first pass, heavy with the second. I've got my knife marks on both sides. Smaller chisel, three eighths works for this. A little bit wider. And this one, now I'm gonna go, because it's wider, I might go with a chisel hammer. Just flick those bits out, and that will naturally flick out to the depth of the cut you made with the knife. Then right on the knife wall, in between the saw cuffs, one light tap, no more than that, at this point. Change chisels because of width. Right in. I'm angling my chisel down towards the wall from here. I'm just using this more as a splitter than anything using the natural property of the wood and the natural part of the bevel to split from here. So I'm not trying to hit the knife wall at all. Just flick it here, flick it here. Now I can go heavier with my cut, with the chop. Not too heavy though, still be sensitive to your material and your tool. 
I'm not following the rake of the dovetail yet. I'm not in deep enough. So it's in and out of the vise. This is primarily safety. Uh, this is my third hand. So I leave it away from the vertical cut and I get a crisp cut inside, right inside this joint. Um, very effective, efficient use of my time. Be conscious of the angle of the wall inside. So I leave her well away from the actual vertical wall because I don't want to leave her this part where the shoulder line is. Now I'm angling to compensate for the bevel the rake of the dovetail. Work from both sides. Very conventional way for making dovetails. If you're working with hand methods, there's really not many ways that you can cut dovetails. So here, the nature of oak, I can't really use up a body pressure. Quite a bit of resistance from the material. And we'll look inside in a second just to see the depth we've gone to and what kind of a cut we're getting inside. So there, there we've got inside from one side and then I'll flip it over nice and crisp inside. Flip it over, crisp and clean work inside that side. Back to chop cuts again, narrow chisel. I'm following the rake of the dovetail, the angle of the dovetail, into the corners. I can still feel, it feels like I'm nowhere near breaking through yet, but I'm actually closer than it sounds. Might turn your chisel over if you want to get deep into that inside corner. trimming inside here. Inside trimming. Make sure your chisel stays sharp, especially when it comes to this trimming, if you need to Sharpen up, go and sharpen your chisels. They have to be sharp for this detail work. A little bit of corner here. Try not to overshoot. I've choked up on my whole of my left hand. I've choked up on the chisel here so as not to overshoot through the other side and damage that outside wall. So 
And that's how you cut the pins. Now we're going to go place this over the dovetails and see how this is likely to fit together. What I do on the inside of here, take my chisel, so this is the leading edge. I go in here and I undercut just slightly without touching the outside corner. The same on this one here. I undercut ever so slightly, not very much, and the same on this side here. Now, you notice I'm cutting towards my right hand, uh, my left hand, but I'm choked up on my chisel so I don't overshoot into it. That gives me a leading edge into the dovetail, and that gives me a start, so now I can start working the dovetail down into the cut, and I can listen, listen to this. This one is looser than this one. This is a little bit tight, but I don't think it's too tight. Now working in oak is very different than other woods like poplar or a softer wood. Can you see I'm partially into the dovetail. I'm probably about a third of the way seated. So now I can feel it's quite tight. So I break my dovetail apart and I look inside here and here and here and here to see whether I've got tightness bruising on the inside. And then I'm going to check by eyeballing here, looking at the end grain just to see. And I think that I can see a slight variance on the inside of here. So I'm going to take a three quarter inch chisel and I'm going to go right on the inside face here and just pare down without touching that outside surface, just to see, yeah, I can see a definite bruising here, which may be where it was tight. Can you see right inside there? There's a little bit of bruising and that will give me a leading edge to drop my chisel on. Let's see if I can turn it towards you a little bit. Probably not here. So I can put my chisel on here. This is my inside face on this side here. So I can pair towards that inside face just a little bit to ease the tension as this dovetail comes together. So they're small things, but they make a big difference. I'm gonna try again, see how this works. Wrong side. So here, I tap, tap. There are a couple of points where this could be too tight. There are several places. Is it the dovetail, an individual dovetail that's tight? Is it both dovetails that are tight? Could it be the pin that's tight in between the two? That's the only way I can resolve this is by looking at any bruising in, inside the dovetails or inside the pin, the tail recesses. And I can see a little bit, now I'm working on the dovetails. So let me show you here. I don't know if you can see this black line. Can you see that black area here, there? That's how deep I went to and that's the trace line off the, off the end of the pin of the tail reset on the side on the pins that's actually inked that surface for me. So I'm just going to go in here, trim this just a hair, get rid of some of that compression, but without touching, I don't want to touch the outside rim on this. I'm going to look inside, this one's the same, it has a little bit of extra material that's compressing. So I'm just going to ease that just a little bit, turn it over and look at this one. Just a hair. Make sure you're good and snug in the vice, tight in the vice, because it makes a big difference to your safety. So 
with this now. It's feeling a little bit closer. So even though I'm almost seated, I'm checking to make sure there is no split anywhere. I'm almost seated, just a little bit more. Soft face of my hammer here. And that's my dovetail fitted. And all I would need to do now, check it on all the sides, make sure my shoulders are tight, they are. So trim this down with the plane here. So I just place one of the nubs under the plane here. Take that one down first. Keep the plane registered against this surface here till it's down. Now it's flush almost. I go to the next one. And then go to this one. Now I'm on the whole surface. So take this down. There we've got a crisp, clean dovetail. This one too, just start on the one nub. It's, it's really only a fraction. Full through cut. And that is how you cut a dovetail.